Hi, and welcome to this Repair Shopper tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the basics on how to open up a ticket. In a previous video, we showed you how to create customers. In this one, we're going to show you one of the several ways to go about creating a ticket. Now, it's important to note that in Repair Shopper, there are actually several hard-coded ways to open a ticket. For instance, on the screen in front of you, I have this big green new ticket button. I'll also mention real quick that on any screen there's this plus symbol that you can click and also select from a bunch of different options. In this case, new ticket. Now there are many other flows in which you can create a ticket like I alluded to, such as ticket workflows, but today we're going to go through what is called the original ticket workflow. The first thing that appears is a customer lookup screen. You can type in first name, last name, business name, phone number, mobile phone number, or email address to get a result for the customer. Once you see the customer you're looking for, select them and hit create ticket. I'll also note that if this is a new customer, you can type in their first name, for example, and hit create ticket and you'll first be sent to the customer creation screen and then when you go to save that information you'll be taken to the new ticket creation screen. In this case it's an existing customer already so hit create ticket and the next page that loads will display a bunch of different information but there are really only three things that are absolutely required to create a ticket when you're starting out. That's a ticket title you can think of that as kind of like a ticket name, an issue type, this is kind of like a category, and a complete issue description. This is usually where people put what's wrong with whatever you're repairing or what the maybe the client or the customer is saying is wrong, which of course is not always what is actually wrong, but I digress. So you enter in those three things, you could then from there just hit create ticket, but in the interest of this tutorial I'll quickly cover the other things on this screen. If you want to use a priority system, you can do so here by setting the priority. The system default due date will automatically reflect here, but you could choose to manually change it if you want. You can also choose what technician will be assigned to the ticket from the outgo if you want it as well. If the customer has a contact or a kind of like a sub customer of sorts, you can also assign that here as well as if the customer maybe has additional locations, you can choose an alternative location from this drop down. Now in another video, we'll cover how to create assets, but assets do attach to tickets and you could choose to add the asset on the creation, the ticket creation screen if you wanted to. Otherwise, you can attach it after the fact as well. The selections on the right hand side, again, are optional, but you can choose to add additional emails that you want to have contacted during this ticket whenever you send like a ticket comment out, for instance. Work approved and work diagnosed are used if you're using the workflow widget, which is an optional feature in the ticket preferences. We have contract options and then ticket custom field types, which will also be covered in a separate video. So let's go ahead and enter in a ticket so you can see it in actual use. And again, the ticket title is like a brief subject line for the ticket. The issue type is a category and then the description is either what your technician has initially identified as being wrong with the device or the object that you're servicing, or sometimes we see people use it as what the client is saying is wrong. And if you hit create ticket, the ticket will be automatically generated. The screen that I have in front of me is called the intake form. This is an optional form that you can choose to enable. One of the really nice things about the intake form is that it is a review page of sorts that allows you to do several other things. Uh, it's a review of everything you typed. 
it gives you access to other features that we'll cover in other videos. But also importantly, for those of you with repair shops, you can have your terms and conditions on this page and you can optionally capture a signature from your client and print this out and, and or email it to them as well. It's a pretty handy feature. Uh, again, it can be found in the ticket preferences section of the admin area and is optional. In this case, I'm gonna hit skip and it's going to take us directly to the ticket. This page is called the Ticket Detail page and you'll have an information overview on the left that will display ticket information, customer information, and any kind of appointments and attachments that you may have for the ticket. The top part will have the progress widget that I mentioned before and the right side is going to have several different sections that contain various features that we'll cover in other videos. Things like a labor log, any attached assets, and the ticket communication section. You can also choose to optionally add ticket charges to the ticket to record anything that you may want to charge the client from labor to a physical good like maybe a hard drive or memory replacement. Uh, you can also optionally transition to an invoice from here and make invoice by hitting make invoice, excuse me. So that's kind of the ins and outs of creating a basic ticket inside of Repair Shopper. Again, there are many other ways that we go over in different videos, but I wanted to cover kind of like a more basic first ticket, how do I do that kind of situation so that you can see what the flow looks like. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.